But I just want to share something not so long tonight. I want to share a few highlights of a couple of things. And I want to bring us back to prayer and worshiping. And I think that I can help some of us get to a deeper place with where we need to be tonight to get to where God wants us to be. Amen. And Brother David said it really good during prayer time. And he gives me a springboard to be able to just bounce back off of. But in Joshua chapter number 3, the Bible says that Joshua rose early in the morning and removed from Shechem and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way before. Or pass this way here too. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves till tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spoke unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Now if I could just share with you just a very common story to just get somewhere tonight. Now, I know some of you may not have been around in 1976, but probably the vast majority of the adults here, you were here in 1976, uh, that year of celebration. However, in that year, there would be some remarkable things that would happen. In fact, there would be uh, Jimmy Carter, uh, uh, the uh, ex-governor uh, of Georgia. He uh, had been campaigning statewide for the race of presidency in 1976. And Brother Craig, he was really different than everybody on the heels of Watergate and uh, uh, with, with uh, competition that, that was well known. He was not well known. And uh, he basically was a man who came from uh, a, 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 the Naval Academy, Brother David. His father wanted him to come home. He needed to come home to take care of, uh, of the farm. Uh, and we know what he was doing, peanuts. You can uh, almost associate peanuts and Jimmy Carter with one another, right? Uh, and, and so, but, but he, uh, uh, after that time of being a governor of Georgia, really he was not a man who was well known. He just simply wasn't. He didn't have the political uh, agenda and background as many of his con contemporaries and those who were, were, were running against him. In fact, Brother David, the thing that I want us to look at about Jimmy Carter tonight is this, and I'm not talking about political things, so just throw the agenda of what side of the campaign he was on, or what he did or what he didn't do. There are some facts that we know for sure that are pretty amazing when we look at this guy. He decided that he was going to run for president, and he went to his first state, and there he uh, rented a, 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 a place in the lobby uh, in, in Des Moines, Iowa, of a hotel, and he set up soft drinks, and he had crackers, and he had cheese, and guess what? Nobody showed up. Jimmy Carter hardly knew anybody who was there. That's the bad thing. So a half an hour passes by, an hour passes by, and nobody, two hours passes by, and nobody, three hours passes by, and there's nobody. And so Jimmy decided that he was going to do something. He decided he was going to take his soft drink, his cheese, and his crackers to the streets. And he found himself in town halls, and he said something to folks that was very, very amazing. He said this. He said, I will tell you this. I will never lie to you. 
with all the problems still stinging from Watergate, it's really what people wanted to hear. I will not lie to you. And this man who hardly knew anybody, this man who didn't have a political background like everybody else, and this man who, who, who just had his, his, his father's peanut farm, that's basically where he came from. He came and with Gerald Ford, it was neck and neck, and he became the president. Do you know why? Because he was not willing to give up on the edge of something. He wanted the presidency, and he was not willing to give up on the edge. Here they are, Joshua and the children of Israel. They are on the edge of the promised land. And Brother David, do you know what? They were not willing to give up on the edge. What can I say to us as believers tonight from the Word of God, from what I just told you about Jimmy Carter, is that we cannot give up on the edge. Amen. Whether we're trying to live for Christ, whether we're trying to influence others for Christ, whether we're trying to live over a temptation or live over sin, whatever it may be, we cannot afford tonight to give up on the edge of something wonderful. Jimmy Carter, if you'd ask him tonight, as old as he is, and he just went through cancer, and, and, and if you would ask him, are you glad you stuck in there? Yes, I'm glad I didn't give up on the edge. Even when things look bad, even when nobody showed up. Mm -hmm. Ask the children of Israel, how do you feel about the promised land? I'm glad we did not give up on the edge. Folks, tonight we cannot give up on the edge, mm -hmm. on the edge of revival, on the edge of the Lord coming back, on the edge of a living victorious. We've got to keep pressing on the presence of God that's here tonight. Amen. When you look at Joshua, it can be divided up into three different sections. You can see them entering into the land of Canaan. You can see them overcoming those that were in the land of Canaan. And then you can see them occupying mm -hmm. the land of Canaan. So it's the entering, it's, it's the overcoming, and then it's the occupying. And, and, and you look back at Deuteronomy, and Moses gave them some great uh, words that were great principles. Moses said the land uh, that, that you're going to go in, it, it's possessed by the enemy, and you've got to destroy the enemy. And listen, when you go into the land, you've got to destroy the enemy, and you cannot compromise with those who are in the land. But David, you said it tonight. We can't go to those dark places. We cannot afford to compromise in our life. We are living on the edge. Mm -hmm. God help us not to get discouraged. God help us not to give up, but on the edge, not to compromise, but to live the way that God wants to inhabit the land, not to compromise. And he said to him, he said, I want you to destroy the idols. I want you to go in into those groves. I want you to claim the groves. I want them to be victorious places for me. Oh, sister, we've got to destroy the idols mm -hmm. of what's going on in the land. Amen. We've got to eradicate the enemy. There's a land that we've got to take and we've got to possess. Amen. I know that there are going to be walled cities. There was Jericho. But God gave them the victory over the big wall. God can give us the victory when we are at the edge. Amen. Amen. All that makes a difference is expecting God to do radical change when He leads the way. I want to say that, expecting God to do radical change when He leads the way. Oh, look, Brother Eli, you gave me a movie, uh, and, and you told me to watch it. And I, 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 I did what you told me to do uh, because it was so important to you. And I, I was watching that, and Brother Eli can fill you in on all the details of what the movie's even called. I don't know. I, I just know that there was a little boy that had great faith, and a man who lost his leg, his leg grew back. There was a woman that her baby was blind, and she prayed over her son, and, 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 he, and he became a, 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 a sight giver back. Uh, someone shot. Uh, they were raised up from the dead. You may say that's that's radical. Uh, but I believe that we need to on the edge expect God to do the radical because He can. Amen. God can. We are on the edge expecting God 
God, change my attitude. God, change my habits. God, change my associations. God, change my thought life. God, change my influences because I want to cross to the place that you have for me. Hallelujah. And so Joshua and the children of Israel, they stand on the edge of the Jordan looking into the land that they've already conquered except they had to conquer the doubt and the fear of their fathers. God, help us to enter into the land that you have for us. You see, they've just gone through the wilderness. It's been 40 years in the wilderness. And yes, there's been some tough times. And yes, there's been some discouraging times. But I need to tell you that you may be in your desert place right now, but you may be on the edge of going to a place that God has for you. And you're right, Brother David. We've got to avoid the dark places that we can inhabit the places that God has for us. Whether it's a, 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 a desert of tribulation or it's a desert of spiritual dryness. I'm not talking about lukewarm. I'm not talking about compromise. Every one of us in here will go through areas of our life that will be spiritual dryness. But we have to keep on going because we are on the edge of something great God has for us. Amen. We may be in the, uh, uh, the desert of, of emptiness and struggle. We may be in the desert of ineffectiveness and isolation or even in the desert of temptation. Mm -hmm. I am in the desert of, of defeat. Uh, but God makes those places some of the greatest weapons where when we get to the edge, we can cross over and inhabit things God has for us as believers. Amen. I believe tonight as we sing a song, consecrate me, dedicate me. God, help me to go to a deeper place in you because you have greater things for me. We are on the edge tonight. We are on the edge. See, here it was that they were facing the Jordan at flood stage. <laughs> right here it is, Brother David, that Joshua says, go across. We're going to go across here. Brother Craig, this is where the leader said go. You know, I believe as a pastor, I, even me, have responsibility to bring our church and our congregation to places that are challenging for us. Joshua knew what God did and what God wanted to do. So he brought them to the Jordan where it was swelled over. And, and, and right here is where God wanted them to cross. Can I just stop and say something? Brother David, you hammered it tonight. Why doesn't God want us to go to some of these places? We bring it into our homes through DVDs. Some folks may never go to the movies and watch those things, but they bring it to their home through DVDs. Some folks will maybe never say some things or act out in some ways, but they're all out right there in their home. Uh, 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 you know one thing, and, and being a daddy, and don't lose out with me, uh, there are DVDs in our house, and sometimes the girls sit down and watch them. We'll sit down and watch them too. But one thing that we're very cautious of, uh, don't lose out, but we don't want all that magical stuff in our house. We don't need our girls watching magic and all that kind of craziness. We want them to know about the power of God. Amen. And my wife and I, we don't sit around and watch movies that talk in language that we would not use in our own vocabulary. Amen. We don't watch things that we wouldn't play out in our own life in front of anybody else. Amen. Because there's some places, dark places for the David, where we just don't go. Amen. Because we want to cross over to what God has for us. Amen. We're on the edge. I wonder if the church would begin to sanctify themselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Begin to watch their attitudes. Begin to watch the things that they involve their life with and allow them to their homes. And and they let down their I wonder if we would put our guard up on the edge what God would have for us in the future. Amen. You can say, Brother Shemilla, that's just too hard. That's just too difficult. I, I want to tell you, I, that, that's not the case. Joshua brought him right here where it was difficult. Amen. The waters were high. He could have went on downstream. There would have been desert. He could have went on upstream where there wasn't a Jericho. But he took him across the highest part of the river at flood stage and he took them 
right where there was a walled city that they were going to have to conquer. You know why? Because Joshua knew that God was able to do great things for them. Amen. Sometimes, amen, sometimes we just have to push away and say this is a pleasing to God. Yes, it's it's hard in the flesh. Sometimes to stand against those that maybe don't understand why we're making those choices. But when we stand on the edge, sometimes it's the toughest place we got to cross to get to the greatest blessings of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. The river posed danger. Maybe it would bring some fear. Maybe there was some of uh, leaving securities of what they knew behind because they didn't know what was on the other side of the river. But I need to tell you, God has good things. In there. I look at the Garden of Eden, Mother David, there was a river there. Ezekiel's temple, there was a river. I believe that when we look at the Word of God, oftentimes the river speaks of revival Amen. and the presence and the power of God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to jump in the water. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to have revival. I'm ready to see a move in the power of God like I've not seen before. Let me tell you, I've seen the power of God. Amen. Some of you know what it's like to see the power of God. Amen. We need to see it again. And we need to see it in a greater way. We're on the edge of it. And we can't allow fear and uncertainty of what lies ahead to hold us back from crossing over to what God has for us. See, Joshua, he had a vision of what he possessed or could possess before he ever possessed it. You have a vision of what God has for you. Amen. Do you have a vision of what you can possess? It takes a, a vision before we can ever possess it. I don't know tonight, folks, and I'm just going to be honest with you. I believe God's calling some folks to a place of sanctification. Amen. Amen. I'm coming out of spiritual barrenness. I'm coming out of emptiness. I'm coming out of temptation, defeat, humiliation. I'm coming out of a place where I'm not as God-centered as I should be. I'm coming out of a place where I, 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 I don't want to be satisfied, but I'm coming into a place where I'm God-focused and I'm revival-focused and I'm restoration-focused and I'm healing-focused and I'm deliverance-focused and I'm victory-focused and I'm blessing-focused. Mm -hmm. on the edge so that we can cross over and we can inhabit. Amen. Sister Beth, if you come back to the game, I told you I'd be short tonight. I'm trying to do Amen. I feel like the presence of God is here. And I believe that God wants to do great things. But it's going to take us saying, God, I'm not going to turn around on the edge. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow fear to overtake me. I'm not going to allow anything that's been inbred in me to overtake me. But right here, I'm saying goodbye to it all. I don't care if it's the deepest part of the river, God. If you say go, that's where I'm going. Because I'm leaving it all behind to inhabit the place that you have for me. It may mean this, that in the land God has for you, it's eradicating all the other gods. It's eradicating the groves. It's not compromising, but it's saying, I am going in and I am inhabiting and I'm making this area sanctified and holy. I'm making it a place where God is honored and where God is pleased with the actions of my life. I'm telling you, maybe some folks need to go home and clean off their computer. Maybe some folks need to go home and clean off their DVD show. Maybe some folks need to go home and clean out their magazine rack. Maybe some folks need to go home and clean out their closet and things that they don't need. Whatever it may be, I'm getting rid of it because I'm going where God wants me to go. I'm not going to compromise with the world. I'm not going to go to those dark places, Brother David, but I'm going to go where it's holy because God's called me to holy living. And I want to see revival. Amen. If that's you tonight, would you come? Would you say, I'm on the edge and I'm crossing over God? You're going to give me the power to defeat the 
enemy tonight. Let's get her in fuel tonight. And let's cross over the edge. Amen. Let's defeat the enemy tonight. Amen. Tell the devil no compromise. Amen. Uh, there's no room here for the enemy, but this is God's ground, and I'm giving it all to God. Hallelujah.